So this section is using Descartes' rule of signs, which is something that was used before there was graphing calculators. So yes, I know you could go graph this and see how many there are, but we're going to go old-fashioned here and um, do the old way, Descartes' rule of signs. So what we do is if we're looking for positive then we're going to count the sign changes. Okay, so what that means is, see how I'm going from negative to negative? That's not a change. I'm going to skip it. And I'm going from negative to positive, that's one change. Then positive to negative, that's another change. So I change signs twice as I go from left to right in the function. So what that means is there's a possibility of two positive real zeros. So if I were to graph this, there could be two positive zeros, so positive on the x-axis, or there could be zero. So what happens is you get your number and then you go down two until you're at zero or one, you're never going to know go negative. So my answer would be 0 or 2. So there could be 2, there could be none. And technically we can graph it and see what we have, right? So that's positive. So if we're trying to find negative real zeros, we have to change all the x's to negative. And then we will do what we did. So I have 5, but I'm going to change that to negative x to the 5th, minus negative x to the 4th. See how every x I'm changing to negative, plus 11 negative x squared, minus 9 negative x, minus 27. And then we're going to simplify. So if I have negative x to the 5th, a negative to the 5th power is a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. So it's going to be positive times a positive times a negative. So this negative changes this whole thing to negative 5x to the 5th. And then here, if I have a negative to the 4th power, I have a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. So what happens is we get a positive times a positive. So this x to the fourth power will be a positive number, but we still have the negative right here. So I'm still going to have negative x to the fourth. And then negative x squared, a negative times a negative is a positive. So when we square something, it actually goes positive. So we're still going to have positive 11x squared. Now I have negative 9 times negative x. A negative times a negative is a positive. So now we have a positive 9. And then the minus 27 stays. Next we're going to do what we already did. We're going to count our sign changes. So I have a negative to negative. There, negative to positive. Positive to positive, positive to negative. So I have two sign changes, which means I have a possibility of two negative zeros. And we do the same thing. It's two, and we're going to go down into to zero. So zero or two are our possibilities. Okay, so. You can graph it and really see how many there are. This is the way we did this before we had graphing calculators. Alright, so let me just make sure I want to hit all the ones where it says positive or negative. Let's do this one. Then we'll go back to just complex. So I'm going to start with our positive, because that one we don't have to do anything. Remember, we just count sign changes. So I have 5x to the 4th minus 10x cubed plus 2x squared plus x minus 20. So let's count. I have a positive 
to negative, there's one. A negative to positive, there's one. A positive to positive, positive to negative, so there's one. So I have three positive, and then remember we go down in two or one. Okay, so positive, I have one or three. And now we're gonna do negative. So remember, we place every x with a negative. So if I have negative x to the fourth, minus 10, negative x to the third, plus two, negative x squared, plus negative x, minus 20. And then we're gonna simplify. So a, number, a negative number to the fourth power goes negative times negative times negative times negative. So that becomes a positive. So this stays a positive 5x to the fourth. A negative times a negative times a negative. So three times negative times a negative is a positive, but then the negative again turns it to a negative. So this stays a negative times a negative 10 though becomes positive 10x cubed. A negative times a negative, so it's squared, is a positive. So this stays a positive 2x squared. Positive times a negative is a negative, and then minus 20. Now we're going to do the same thing. We're going to count. So 5, to, or positive to positive, positive to positive, positive to negative, negative to negative. So there's only one negative here. Okay, so now we need to talk about the imaginary, but first we have to look at what's the degree of this polynomial. We're going to use what we call the fundamental theorem of algebra. This is degree 4. So that means that there's going to be four zeros. Okay, so we know that there's one or three positive. We know that there's just one negative, and now we have to figure out, well, what about imaginary? So I'm going to put in a table here. Let's see. Let's see. If I, there's always one negative. So if I have three positive and that one negative, see how I already have four? Three plus one is four. That means there's gonna be zero imaginary. But what if I have this one positive and one negative? Well, remember these have to add to four. There's four zeros. So if there's one positive and one negative, there must be two imaginary. So my options for imaginary are 0 or 2. Oh, complex. Remember that complex and imaginary, same thing. Okay, sorry for that confusion. So those would be my possibilities. I want to hit every one. Negative, positive, complex. I think I said imaginary because this one says imaginary, right? So let's do this one. How many imaginary? So guess what? We have to go through positive and negative to find imaginary. So let's start with positive. And we're counting sign changes. Nope. Yes. Yes. Negative to positive, positive to negative. So there's two positive. And then remember, we go down and two or zero positive. So two or zero. Okay, now we're gonna do negative. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Where we replace every x with a negative x. So negative six, negative x squared, minus seven, negative x squared, plus eighteen, negative x. So a negative to the fifth power, negative times negative is positive, negative times negative is positive, and then I have a negative left over. So this stays negative, but then I have a negative x times a negative six. 
makes a positive 6x to the fifth. A negative squared is a negative times a negative. I can get my camera, which is a positive. So, but it's still a negative 7, so it stays negative x squared. Negative times a positive is a negative. Okay, so now we're going to count our sign changes. One, just one. So it's kind of like the last one. There's one negative. All right, so now let's look at our table. We'll just leave it. <laughs> okay, <gasps> sorry, formatting. So, First, we have to look at the degree. This is degree five, which means that all of our zeros add to five. So if I have two positive, because that's one option. Oops, I don't want to type them on the right. There's always one negative. Then how many complex will there be? Two plus one is three, but we need five. So there'll be two imaginary. How long is that keep happening? I don't want to type. Sorry. Okay, now I'm gonna go to my other option. What if I have zero positive? There's always one negative. That one doesn't change. Then how many imaginaries do I have? I have to add to five. So there's four imaginary. Okay, so those are options two or four. So, let's do another one. How many imaginary? So we have to do all of them. We have to do positive and negative. Okay, so positive, let's count our sign changes. Zero, one, zero. Cool, just one positive this time. Now let's do negative by changing our x to a negative x. So negative four, negative x to the fifth minus 6, negative x to the 4th, plus 7, negative x, plus 5. Okay, a negative to a fifth power stays negative. So now I have negative x times negative 4, which is positive 4x to the 5th. A negative to the 4th power goes positive, negative, 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 negative. So this negative times a positive is negative 6x to the 4th. Positive times a negative is a negative plus 5. So let's count. We have one, two sign changes. So we have two negative, and then remember we have to go down, or zero negative. Now we have to find how many imaginary. But you have to look at the degree. Degree is five. That means all zeros add to five. Okay. So I'm gonna make kind of my own table because last time I had this shape string. So what happens, I always have one positive. But I have options here. I could have two negative, or I could have zero negative. So now we're gonna fill in the blanks with the imaginary. Across my row has to add to five. So I have one plus two is three. So if that's the situation, I would have to have two imaginary. Let's look at the second situation. I have one positive and zero negative. So 
so that means there has to be four imaginary. And those are my situations, so two or four again on that one. Okay, let's look at five. Given a function and one of its zeros, find all the zeros of the function. So negative 2 is a 0, and I'm going to graph it and show you what it means. Okay, so go to Desmos, and we're going to go to Graphing, and I have x to the third, minus 14x squared, plus 68x, plus 200. And I'm graphing this specifically because it's asking about zeros. So see, negative 2 is where we cross the axis, that's its 0. Where else do we cross the axis? Do we cross at 0? Do we cross at 2? No. So what that means is I have a negative 0, because it's negative 2, it's a negative number, but 1 negative. And that's it that I can see on the graph. That means that my other two must be imaginary. Why are there two? Because I have to have three total. The degree of this polynomial is three. Okay, so whenever we have an imaginary zero, it has an I in it. And there's always two of them that are called conjugates. So eight minus eight plus six I my other two are the imaginary ones. And I'm not going to make you solve for those, I just want you to know what they look like so you can pick those. Okay, so let's do another. State the number of positive, negative, and complex. So positive, let's look at our sign changes. Negative to negative, negative to negative, negative to zero. There's no sign changes. That means zero positive. Okay, let's look at negative. I'm putting a negative x everywhere. Right? Okay. So a negative to the sixth power. Negative, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive. Everything's positive. So I have negative 5x to the 6. Negative to the 4th power, negative, negative, positive, negative, negative, positive. Same thing if you square, it becomes positive. So nothing changed in our function here. There's zero changes. So zero negative, that means all of our zeros are complex. And how many zeros do we have? Six. Alright, so this is one where we want to find all the zeros, and there's going to be four. So we're given a complex zero. And I know it's complex because there's an i. So remember what I said, if there's an i, then there's two zeros that are conjugates. And a conjugate means you just change the sign. So a four plus i is a zero, four minus i is also a zero. Okay, so for the rest of these, I'm gonna graph it. Let's see if I can get any. Because we're looking for values, I can graph it. If it's asking for possibilities, a lot harder to graph because you need to use Descartes rule signs. Okay, so my other zeros are negative 2 and positive 2. It's the x values. And then this one we were given. So there's all four of the zeros. And then I have one more on here that just reviews Descartes' rule of signs one more time. Okay, so let's do it. It's asking for positive, so I'm looking for sign changes, and there's just two. Positive to negative, negative to positive. So zero or two positive. For negative, we have to do the x's. So 
we have negative x to the fourth plus six negative x squared minus six negative x plus 18. So negative, 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 negative makes a positive. Negative, negative makes a positive. Negative, negative makes a positive and positive. So everything becomes positive. There's no sign changes, so there's zero negative. So we're right here, zero negative, zero or two positive. Now we need to find our complex. So there's my makeshift table here. <laughs> and we list our possibilities. So I have two positive, zero positive, and two positive, and then there's always zero negative. And our degree is four, so our column has to add to four. If I have zero, zero all here, this means I have to have four complex. If I have two and zero, that means there would be two complex, because each row has to add to four. So two or four complex.